If the Eiffel Tower had to be built, it had to be because of vision. If the United States of America had to be independent of Britain, it had to be because of vision. If Amazon had to be the biggest, one of the biggest IT companies, technology companies in the world, it had to be because of vision. If anything has got to be done and to be successful, always it has to be because of vision. And that is why it is important for each and every one of us on a personal level, personal level, that's the thing, on a personal level, someone wakes you up at uh, whatever time it is in the night and they ask you, what is your vision? We should be having it at the back of our minds. It should be ingrained so much in us that it is part and parcel of our psyche, part and parcel of our thinking, part and parcel of our ambition. It has got to be there. But we don't succeed for the most part because we do not have this. And I want us to look at one more way, one reason as to why we do not have personal vision. Uh, stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. So, let us just get this out of the way. Initially, at the door, at the entrance of a house, you cannot know, especially if it's your first house, you cannot know what lies ahead, what you're going to experience, what you're going to see. You cannot know until you enter through that door and then you start experiencing, touching, seeing, feeling, and so on and so forth. And that's the same thing with vision. You cannot know about vision until you have been bold enough to download it and to start pursuing it. What remains is just the realm of possibilities unless the vision comes in and starts pulling those possibilities towards you. It is a vision that pulls you towards the possibilities and pulls the possibilities towards you. In other words, without vision, it is possible that very many things that could have been have not because there was no vision. And the Bible tells us that without vision, the people perish, they cast off restraint. And I've talked about that and I don't want to continue doing that. But let, let us say this, that everything you see today, the airfield tower, the streets, the bulb, the house you're living in, the microphone you're using, the laptop you have, the chair you're sitting on, the bed you're sleeping in, the suitcases that you're using, the shoes you're wearing, and uh, the clothes you're putting on, everything you see, everything you're using today can never have been where it is, can never have been a reality if there was no vision in the first place. Vision is what brought that thing to reality. They, they normally t tell us that every time you see a building, it wasn't created once. Every time you see a construction, an engineering project, it wasn't created once. When you see these guys who are trying to go to the moon and back, they don't go there once. They use simulators and they go there fast and so on. When you see a programmer coming up with an app or a website or a program that solves a particular problem, it wasn't created once. There's something they call dry running. 
actually they do systems development they sit down and they structure the system they design the system they go through a flow chart of processes this is going to happen and then this and then this and then this and then this and then we get the result and after they have determined how the path is going to look like that's when they build the system the same thing with the house you don't just build a house you call an architect who is going to come and they show you an artistic impression of how the house is gonna look like once it's been constructed but they're also going to show you the blueprints of how it's going to look like the rooms are going to be like this this big and this is where the bathrooms are going to be like this is where the sitting room is going to be like this is where the study is going to be this is where your studio is going to be this is where your living room is going to be this is where the bedrooms are going to be it is even done before a single stone can be laid down that is vision and on a personal level you see the i can tell you that on a daily basis today the proliferation of vision is all over the place the effectual working of vision is all over the place until you start talking to an individual and ask them about their personal vision that's where the missing link is but all around us everything is because of vision everything exists because of vision until you meet an individual that's why i'm saying it is important for us to craft our own personal visions and there are some reasons as to why we hold back and i've been discussing some of this and i'm helping you to see yourself through these discussions that the first thing that we normally do that makes us not to create a vision of our own or personal vision of our own is that we are afraid we might be wrong first of all wrong in that we are going against the grain we are unconventional we are not fitting in we are disturbing the status quo we are revolutionary and therefore we attract attention we become like rebels and we do not want to rebel we do not want to be unconventional, we want to fit in, we want to be accepted, we want to be cool, calm and collected, we want to be part of the group. And therefore, we don't come up with our own visions. That is one of the biggest things. And then the other is that we think that we are actually going to be doing the wrong thing. We feel that we are going to do the wrong thing. We are afraid of doing the wrong thing. And the worst part of it is that we don't do nothing for 80 years because we were afraid we were going to do something wrong. And therefore, those 80 years, we, didn't, we did not leave our vision in the first place. That's one reason, major reason as to why people do not have a vision. So I will tell you, do it. The vision is close to you. Pursue it. Download it and pursue it. The second reason as to why people do not pursue their vision is because they wrongly think that a vision is big enough and it is business enough and it is strategic enough for big time corporations, entities, multinationals, countries, NGOs, and not for an individual. And therefore you find very many CEOs or even section leaders and uh, departmental leaders who are having budgets of billions of dollars for their departments and they are pursuing the vision for that department. That same self guy doesn't have a vision of his own. Why? Because they believe that vision is not for personal benefit. You will be wrong because even that organization you're working in, it started with a vision of a personal, personal vision. I kid you not. Find me a company. Find me a multinational company or even a small company, whatever it is, in your country, in this world, that did not have a personal vision to begin with. Talk of Starbucks. A big beautiful story about a personal vision talk of apple itself beautiful story about personal vision it starts with an individual so don't cut yourself out thinking that this vision business mission business values business only for organizations that put those placards on their entrance and on their websites no it starts with an individual and you are not exempt now the third reason as to why people do not have a personal vision I think the greatest reason is people do not have heartfelt vision because of ignorance. That to me is one of the biggest. You see, the idea of vision is not the mainstay in life. What we are interested in for the most part, you'll be shocked. 
what we're interested in for the most part, especially in the way we've been educated, is not why things are, but it is how things are. We want to know how things work. We don't want to know why. That's why your kid can go to school, and I'm talking about myself, for four good years and study a subject called agriculture and come back home with a certificate in, you know, whatever, Kenya Living School, Secondary Living Certificate, come back with a B minus, and you ask them to do something in agriculture. They can't because the why was left out. We think that all we need to know is how of, the how of operations of things. So we learn how to code. We learn how to deliver a public speech. You know, we learn how to sing. We learn how to write a great book, an article, a poem, and so on. And then we flock into very many schools. You, you should see when you do call for an interview and you see how many people are going to come with a battalion of certificates, you know, teaching them how to do this, how to do this, how to use Microsoft Word, how to use Microsoft Excel, a certificate for Word, a certificate for Excel, a certificate for PowerPoint, a certificate for Access, a certificate for Publisher, a certificate for Networking. I'm telling you. And we flock into schools to you know teach us what this how this can be done how that can be done you know so that we can in increase our technical know-how you can have as much technical know-how but if you lack vision if you lack the why you know the why is in the realm of vision if you lack the why you're missing a big component of vision, a big component of success. It is okay to have the technical know-how. There's no, nothing wrong with that. It is okay, but it is putting the cart before the horse, I believe. Why would you know how a phone works, the internal workings of a computer, the internal workings of the fridge, if you don't know why the fridge is there in the first place, the phone is there in the first place? Why is in the realm of the vision? What we need to know is the why of the operation of things in life more than the how or before the how. Someone said that if we know the why, we can almost always overcome any how. It goes that way. So the why is supposed to come first. The vision is supposed to come first. But we are ignorant of this fact. The reason as to why we do not pursue vision or we do not even have vision of our own is because of ignorance. We think that the most important thing is the how. So we're looking at the guy with the biggest IQ and the IQ is just academic by the way. I mean just academic. They measure IQs and so on and so forth. We look for the guy with the IQ, the guy who knows how things work and whatever it is and so on. But the same guy doesn't know why at the end of the day. So I want to know why you are writing. I want to know why you are singing. I want to know why you are coding. I want to know why you are speaking public. I mean public speaker. What else? What is the end in mind? What is the end in mind? Towards what end? What impact are you looking for? If you just tell me how the car operates, you know, how the, the, the clutch does this and the pin stones and in the car. Towards what end? Towards what end? The vision speaks towards the end, towards what end. You know, I can tell you that without this end in mind, we risk what R. Covey was telling us, that you can climb up to the top of the wall and you realize that your ladder was leaning on the wrong wall. So ignorance is one of the biggest reasons as to why people do not pursue vision. And probably this ignorance is because in the mainstream, people do not teach vision. Show me a place where kids learn about personal vision. I mean, they can be made to cram personal visions for organizations like Disney and, you know, business cases. You know, they study business cases of organizations and their vision, their missions and so on. But then at the individual level, it's not there. People are not taught how to download their own vision. Probably the ignorance is not just in the people themselves, it's even in the teachers. And guess what? It's even in the 
parents. A parent without a vision cannot expect a child to have a vision of their own. That ignorance is so pervasive in this society today that we need to deal with it. And that's why I'm doing these episodes and encouraging us that where there is a will, there's going to be a way that we need to draw a line in the sand and we need to have our own personal visions. They, they are personal. They, 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 there's nothing right or wrong about it. The problem with us is that we want to pass examinations and we want our vision to be so right. So right in whose eyes? Who is the marking? Who marks vision? I mean, who scores marks about vision? Nobody scores marks about vision. Your vision is your vision. So go ahead and have it. Go ahead and create it. Well, tomorrow we're going to discuss something else in that realm that teaches us the reasons as to why we do not have a personal vision and we're going to look at the respite. Until then, bye-bye. A special shout out to my mentor Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University found at mastermindmentor.com who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.